What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Michael Lindell. Another episode, another episode of How to Get Your Money Right, guys. Listen, on this episode, we're going to talk about money because that is what everybody need right now. It is hell in the streets. It's blood in the streets. Inflation, interest rates, uh, credit card savings, um, everything that you can look at from a monetary standpoint, from a wealth standpoint, is all upside down right now. And so many people, myself included, is really feeling the heat. And so I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna talk to you guys real quick about money. It's very important that we talk about money, okay? And and I want you guys to understand one thing, okay? Money, money, money by itself is not what you're looking for, okay? You're looking for the right opportunity that will allow you to collect the amount of money that you need. And that is the essence of money. That is the essence of building wealth. It is not to go out there and work and hustle and do all this stuff to try to collect money, right? You can do that. It may help some people, but the idea alone is to create the opportunity, the best opportunity that you could possibly make that will put you in a situation where you can accumulate money during this time right now. So I want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I, I want this to be more fundamental, and I want people to you know learn how to get money, how to collect money, how to save money, you know how to look at your expenses. You know all of these things go hand in hand in terms of how you build wealth. Okay. So my name is Michael Lindell. I'm a realtor. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. Been a business owner for about 12 years now. Um, and I too have been in a situation where I was dead broke, poor, no money to my name, but I found a way, I found a way to make it work. Okay. I found a way, certain things, certain tactics, certain fundamentals. It was all fundamentals that allowed me to be able to build the wealth that I have today. So I'm going to share this with you guys. Okay. All right. When, 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 and so when we're talking about income and when we're talking about wealth, these are the only things, and I don't want to confuse everybody, okay? But these are the things that you only need to be concerned about. Number one, it is expenses. No matter what people tell you, if they say you to focus on income, it doesn't matter, okay? Because your expenses can subtract from your income. Number two, it is going to be income, okay? All right? So your expenses, income. Then number three, we have um, investments, okay? And we, you know, we're not going to dive too much into investments. I, I want this to be more fundamental so that you guys understand that even in this market, you can still do some damage and collect money and, and make sound investments. OK, so you have expenses, you have income, you have investments. Um, and that is really it, guys. That is really it. And it's, so if you could focus just on these three things. You have nothing else to worry about in your life. Promise you guys, this is the holy grail. As, as minute as this may seem, I promise you guys, this here is your gateway. All right. So number one, I want us to tackle this thing that we just talked about uh, called expenses. Okay. All right. How should you manage expenses? How should you manage expenses? I remember back in the day where I would take expenses and I would treat it as income. You may say, what do you mean by that? I used to look at my credit card and say, oh, this is income for me. It's not income. It's not income. Okay. Expenses is an expense. Okay. It is expense. It is, it, it leaves your money. Okay. Any, look at this. Anything that leaves, anything that leaves your wallet, anything that get, that, that leaves your income, that leaves your bank account. Okay. Is a subtractor. OK, that is a subtractor. Any money that you have in your bank account that leaves your account is now a is now a subtractor. We are trying to exchange and this is the key with expenses. We're trying to exchange expenses. Hear me out with this right here with debt. That is the key. The key is not to take expenses and then go buy, you know, shoes, cars, furniture, you know, like none of these things add income to your bottom line. 
your expenses be needs to become debt. And your debt now becomes your investment. Okay? The most important thing, guys, when we talk about expenses, income, and, and, and investments, you know, like, your income is very important. But the, really the key in all of this is how do you manage your expenses? How do you manage the amount of money? Because we all have income. We all have money here. We all have money. It's about how you manage your money. So if you can take expenses and then turn your expenses into debt, because this is money, okay? Expenses is really cash, all right? So I, I'm, I just want you guys to look at it from a different angle. This expense is really cash. So I'm telling you to take cash, hold it in the bank, have, show the lender, show whoever's going to loan you money, that you have enough money to secure this asset. But you need debt to help leverage this investment. And I hope I'm not going over anyone's head right now. Okay. So look at your expenses. Every time you spend money, every time it goes out, vacations, uh, food, drinking, liquor, it all adds up and it subtracts. Is it, it, This is what we call a detractor. Okay. Has no value whatsoever. Has zero. Because as soon as this money comes down, it now goes out. It's gone. Poof. Into the abyss. It's gone. But when we have debt and we have investments, now we can now create income. Why? Because our investment is paying us income every single month. So we always, people always want to say, oh, how do I invest? How do I get money? I mean, what do, what do I need to invest in? What do I need to invest in? And I, and I, you know, I kind of cringe when people say that because, you know, money, money alone is not just looking at investments, right? Guys, there's so many steps that happen before you can actually make it into the investment class. You have to know fundamentals. You have to know how to manage your expenses. How do you manage your expenses to the degree at which you can take what you were going to spend and turn it over into income, all right? Now, this second thing I want to talk to you guys about, okay? Now, people always say, oh, you know, debt is bad and debt is bad. Only, only Dave Ramsey and only those uh, financial analysts, those guys that think they know a lot, but you ask them what they have in their account, they're going to tell you, you know, yeah, yeah. But, you know, expenses is, is a loan um, very important to how much you build wealth. So the second part I want to talk about, guys, look, is income. This is another holy grail. Why? Because the more money you're able to make, the more investments you're able to accumulate. Okay? The more money you make, the more investments you're able to accumulate, okay? Lenders, people that have money, that want to loan you money, they want to see just how successful you are and how much fundamentals do you have? How do you manage money? Do you have money in the bank right now? They want to know how liable or not liable, but how, um, how secure are you with your own money? I want you guys to draw an asterisk by income. That can be your day job. It can be uh, if you're cutting grass and you're, just, and you're just making money. The key with making money and having income, again, the same idea. What we're trying to do is take our day job income, whatever we have, and we are trying to turn this baby into um, debt. Okay. Why? Because we cannot make enough money on our job to be able to go straight to an investment. Now, some people take a piece of their check and just throw it into an investment. They just let that accumulate. You can do that, but it's the slowest way to wealth. You'll be 60 years old. You have this retirement account. You may have close to a million dollars in it if you do it right. And you'll be able to feel like, hey, I didn't did something with my life. And by the time you have you have to pay for your surgery, by the time you pay for your whatever sickness is, God forbid anybody gets sick. You, you know, your burial, your, your everything else to pay your debts off and everything, you're not going to be able to leave a million dollars to your kids. You're going to be able to leave probably somewhere around $100,000. And if you have four kids or if you have some, you know, 10 kids, 
That money's gone. It's no money, right? So what I'm trying to do is create enough investments so that you can pass on this investment to your heirs, to your children and their children's children so that they don't have to necessarily work a day of their life. That is the life. The Bible says, uh, um, how does it go? The Bible says that um, a man leave an inheritance, right? So it's our job. It is our job to leave an inheritance to our kids. So income, when we look at income, our income, we're trying to convert this income into debt. And when we convert this income into debt, this income should it turn into an investment. Okay. The debt is the investment. The debt is the investment. Okay. And so when we have the investment and, and this investment now creates a cash flow for us. Yeah, we got to pay some expenses out to keep this asset. Yeah, we, we do. But there's also this thing called ROI. My return on that investment is my income from my investment minus my expenses gives me my return on my investment. So guys, when we're looking at money, even in this market right now, you may be saying interest rates are high. You're reading to the news. You're saying, I don't want to buy a house. You don't want to go out and do anything. Why? Why? Because you're, you're so wrapped up into what people are saying about this current market right now, and you don't want to take action. So I challenge everyone to take action right now, even with higher interest rates. So let me give you this other scenario real quick. So let's say that we have, you want to go out there and buy a house. Now, most people that may be watching right now may not have a house. You may have a house. Okay, so if you have a house, you understand the value of it. You understand the appreciation if you bought right. Now, this is one of the things that I do, and I'm just sharing this with you as a bonus, okay? Now, what we can do, what I want you, what you could do when I say buy a house, okay? If you buy right, great location, um, you know, you have great quality of life, um, you have great schools, you know, great shopping. Um, you have great politics. Okay, that's that's business. That's pro business, pro schools, pro making sure the area stays tidy. All right. So if you can hit, knock off location, quality of life, school, shopping, politics, you're ace in the hole. Okay, you're doing better than the majority of the people out there who bought a house. Okay. So when you go out there and you buy a house, what we're trying to do is take your day job income, okay? You can be working on a job. And, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna now, we're gonna take this income and we're gonna turn this income into debt. When you buy a house, you're gonna buy it because you're gonna finance it, right? Majority of us, is, we're gonna finance the house. So when we take our day job income, we're gonna turn this into debt. And then this debt becomes our investment Okay, this investment now becomes our income because of the cash flow. Now, some of you guys can go out, you go out there and you buy one house and you're not really charging your tenants much of anything. You need to increase your rent. Everybody always say, oh, I, I don't know if my tenants can afford to pay this or pay that. The only reason why you feel like that is because you can't afford it yourself. So you're lying to yourself and you're inflicting your belief in what you know you can pay on someone else who you have no idea who they are and how much money they make, okay? So when, you, when you're buying a house, you need to look at the rental market to find out, okay, how much money can I make in this particular market? Post it on Facebook, post it on Craigslist. I don't care if it's just one single room in your home. Again, guys, this is not the time to be trying to find out, okay, I don't know if I should be doing this. I, I just need to stay on my job and hopefully my job is gonna bring in enough money. No, this is not the market that we're in. The market that we're currently in right now, you have to be looking for other streams of income. And the, the quickest way, everybody here on this channel, we sleep, we have shelter, we, we sleep somewhere. Now, unfortunately, if you rent, it's harder to move someone into a bedroom or, or rent that room out. This is why I tell people, do not, do not rent. Stop renting. I don't understand why people keep on renting. Why are you renting? Every time you rent, you pay this guy called the landlord. And the landlord, this, this is what the landlord do. I'm, I'm going to take the same scenario what I just told you guys to do. 
Imagine the landlord want to buy this house. The landlord is going to take his income that he has from other projects and other assets that he's accumulated, income, same as yours. He's going to turn that income into debt. He's going to go to the bank and say, hey, guys, I have this much money. All right. I want to buy this. I have, a, you know, I have some money set aside. I want to buy this investment. OK, they're going to give him the debt. He's going to buy the investment and then that investment is going to turn into income. That is what you do when you rent. That is what landlords do. When you're renting from a landlord, that's what, and you're on the opposite side of the transaction. You are the, you are the landlord's income. You are the landlord's income. So while the landlord increases his wealth, your wealth diminishes. Again, when the landlord's income or wealth increase, Yours diminish. Why? Right? Because it goes back to our first scenario. Your expenses, your expenses should go to create income. Okay? Because we look at expenses as, as money. Your expenses is a, detr is a de detractor. We talked about this in the beginning. It's a detractor. Okay? It's gone. Poof. When you take your money, your income, and you give it to a landlord, guess what? The, land the money goes up and poof. Gone. Guess what? You got to do it again in 30 days. Give it to him again. Poof. Gone. You, do, you give it to him again in 12 months to, to a full year. You gave this guy, you gave this landlord all this money. He's just been raking in the money, raking in the money, raking in the money. And you, you, sad face. Sad. Because you have no money. Why? Because you gave your money to somebody where you could have simply taken that money, saved it. All that money that you were paying the landlord, you could have saved it and bought you a house Turn that house into um, you taking that income, okay? That you that you wanted to buy this house, turn it into debt, create an investment, and now you have income on that property. But you guys are afraid to do that. I don't know why. It, 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 I mean, guys, like it it, it 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 is the single greatest misunderstanding that I probably can come up with. I used to be on the other side and say, "Hey, renting is good," you know. You, you know, you'd be able to move and everything like that. But I said, look, hold on. I can't just leave my apartment without some crazy fee. They're going to charge me like crazy if I try to leave early. I can sell a house faster to someone than I can if I was renting and I wanted to move. I can sell a house faster. I can, in this market, you can sell a house in maybe 14, 21 days. Maybe in 45 days, the entire transaction is done. Guess what? You can't leave without paying this crazy fee. Again, a detractor. You're paying a fee just to break your lease. So again, number one, expenses. How do you manage your expenses? How do you view your expenses? Where do your expenses go? Look at expenses as money. That is money, that is money. That is money that can be used to do other things. Number two, most important thing is income. How are you managing your income? We're trying to accumulate enough income and save enough income so we can go get our debt. The lenders like to see cash. They want to see that you're solidified as a person. Okay. Number three, mind you, I never said anything about credit. You know, you guys are all bent up out of shape about credit. I don't know why you're so bent out of shape about credit. Credit is not the most important thing when it comes to investing. Okay. It is this right here. It is the, it is the cash. Yeah, you can have good credit. Okay? You got good credit. I'm not telling people to have bad credit. I'm just saying you spend too much time on it. You're paying other people. Again, you're paying other people to fix a credit that you don't need. Again, it is a detractor. Detractor. Gone. Oh, poof. Go into the abyss. And guess what? Your, your credit probably didn't even get better than it was before you gave your credit to the guy or the girl that did that was supposed to work on your credit. Number three, investments. Okay. Three of the holy grails to making money. So I don't know what boat you're in. I know that we're in a crazy market right now. Interest rates are high. It's, you know, everything to buy anything is 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 <coughs> it's expensive. So you have to you have to know that listen, I cannot be out there spending money right now on crazy things that's not providing a return. Your expenses. Understand one thing, must be ROI positive, okay? Your expenses must be ROI positive. What do I mean by that? That means that every time you spend money, it must provide a return to you. 
Every time you spend money, it must provide a return. Every time you spend money, it must provide a return. Every time you spend money, it must provide a return. Great health, it must provide a return for great health. It must provide a return for more money. It must provide a return for spending more time with my kids or your kids, okay? What is your expenses contributing to? Don't say travel makes me happy, okay? Because you can very well stay home. And I promise you, if you have more money in your bank account today than you did tomorrow, you're much happier, even though you would have took that trip. Because when you took the trip, that was a detractor. So stop trying to justify your expenses with an ROI positive. Don't do that. Okay? So manage your expenses. Look at your expenses. What am I spending money on last month? What did I spend money on? I'm not going to spend money on crazy things. Income. How do I manage my income? I'm going to stay on my job. I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to do a great job. Hopefully, I make some more money. They see my value. I'm going to take my income and I'm going to turn that into debt. Your investments, once you get the debt, you now secure the investment. Your investment is your driver. Your investment is your wealth. Your investments is your legacy. So until you're able to convert your cash that you have into debt, yes, I want you to convert that over to debt. Debt, I'm gonna tell you guys this. I'm gonna go on the record with this. Your debt, your debt is more important than the cash. Repeat that again. Your debt is more important than the cash. Why? Because I can go, I can go to a lender. I can go out to the debt market and I can say, look, uh, I want to buy this asset. Okay. They're going to say, okay, Mike, you want to buy this asset? Give us 20% down. All right, cool. How much will you give me lender? We'll give you 80%. You see what I'm saying? I gave these guys 20% cash to, to, to uh, give me a investment. They gave me 80% of my investment, okay? Check this out. When they gave me this 80% investment, when they gave me 80% cash to go toward to buy this investment here, guess what happened? The income that generates from this asset that generates from this investment, guess what? It is making income off of a hundred percent of this asset, not 20%. You guys follow me? This investment that the lender just gave me, because remember I put 20% down, they gave me 80%, okay? I got the investment, I secured it. And then what I did was it generated income, great. That income that I received, was not based off of, oh, only 20% because you only put 20% down, you only get 20% of the profits. No, sir. I get 20, I get 100% of the income that I made on the property. Yes, I'm about to pay these guys debt. Okay, I'll give you 6%. But guess who keeps not the, the other 94%? Me, my investors. So you, gotta, you guys have to look at money smarter, guys. And you have to stop looking at money as a, as a bad thing. Okay, the love of money is the root of all evil. Not the not money is the root of all the, all evil. So until you guys can understand this, that is when your life is going to change for you. Mentally in your mind, manage your expenses. Only spend money that provides a return. Happiness, great sleep, um, um, uh, health must provide a return. Do that, and I promise you guys, you make a lot of money in your life.